Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to Stormworks. We're on episode six, and I have a new mission. And well, it's both a new mission and an old mission because I have to once again rescue stranded fisher people. It seems like there's only four missions on this whole map, this whole island that I'm currently at. So once again, I'm gonna have to make the trek from my base over here, all the way through the canals, through the um, well, the swampland, I suppose you could call it, the uh, narrows and the the shallows, all the way down there. And just to get the fisher people from there to here and take it all the way back. Alternatively, I could uh, take my ship over here, run over there, get them out of the wreck and run back. So there are really two options. Now I have a very fast craft. Uh, this is the Swamp Razor. And the Swamp Razor is particularly designed to not have a big draft. So it's not going to be into the water too deep. Um... Yeah, it's dark right now, so you won't be able to see it. But it goes about this deep, this line. Depending, of course, on how fast it's going to get. Now, it's quite uh, the, the tacked out boat. I have a spotlight. I even have flashers on it. Uh, I have a couple of these new seats. These are the seats that are called the padded seats. A uh, small passenger seat. And as you can see, they take up uh, only half of the amount of space of a normal seat. And I think that for a small rescue craft, they do exactly what they need to do. So, all that's left to do is spawn it in. Uh, and if I can find my fuel tank, fuel it up. It is quite the hungry ship in the form of how much fuel it takes. But that has everything to do with the amount of speed that it generates. Because I got two uh, pretty big engines in there. Well, they are the standard engines, but even those can get quite hungry depending on how you set them up. Originally, I was going for a design which has more of uh, a diesel electric shape. So I provide power to uh, the main props through electric motors. And then I generate the power for that using a couple of diesels. But I just couldn't quite get it to work the way that I wanted. I couldn't get the speed out of it. So maybe with the advanced motors or the advanced engines, I can actually do that. And we are getting fuel. Uh, let's get the... Uh, yeah, I'll show you the flashers while it's still dark. Um, <laughs> adds absolutely nothing to the boat. But since we're going to be operating this fast, I thought, why the hell not? And uh, if I still have time at the end of the video, I'll show you how I did that. For now, I want my main lights. Uh, we have all the fuel I need, so I can cast off the fuel lines. Give it a bit of throttle. Start the engine. And get underway. And as I have mentioned, this ship is really fast. It does come at the expense of fuel, unfortunately. And you gotta get it from somewhere. Uh, it cannot be extremely fast and be extremely fuel efficient. I just haven't found a way to do that yet. So right now I'm already doing uh, 80 kilometers per hour. And yes, I'm still transmitting or I'm still uh, translating this in kph as opposed to knots. Because the distance that I travel is also in kilometers. If that was in knots, I would probably translate this to knots to see how fast I would need to be in order to get there in time. Right now, uh, you can see I'm not very deep. The stern is the deepest part of the ship. And as you might have already seen, I have keel lights, which give me indicators on the keel to see how far exactly I'm uh, sticking into the water. And of course, at lower speeds, I will not have as much of the aft sticking into the water. Because the whole weight of the boat is going to be uh, leveled over the most or the, the better part of the ship. Now, since I'm not really in a hurry, I have 40 minutes, I can just take it at cruise speed cruise mode, which uh, drastically lowers the amount of fuel usage and also drastically lowers the amount of speed. I'm still pretty fast, uh, doing about 55, and that's not even a full throttle, but at least my fuel is going to last a good bit longer, because in the, what, kilometer or two? Yeah, two and a half kilometers that I just traveled, I already used up 50 liters of fuel, so that's 25 liters per kilometer, which is not very fuel efficient. But then again, this craft can do about 130. Now, let's turn on the flashers. <laughs> I still quite like the effect. Uh, spotlight's no longer really necessary. And 
I really am quite bummed that it didn't really work out with the way that I had the craft originally set up, which was to use the diesel electric, because it just gives you a couple more options. And it allows for a different design. But then when I finally got the boat into the water, and just designing this took me uh, about four to five hours. Testing, designing, figuring out what works, what doesn't work. You're constantly experimenting, uh, testing out different microcontrollers. And right now I'm quite happy with the design. But the diesel electric just didn't quite work. Because I couldn't generate enough power. And generate enough speed. Uh, this is not quite the entrance yet. Now I really hope that uh, with Friday's update. So that's uh, Friday the 9th. They're going to be adding a couple more missions for the Sawyers. I did give them a couple of suggestions. Um, I'm really hoping that they add more stuff to do. Because there really are four missions then. It's, well, it's going to get very difficult for me to keep this series interesting. Because I simply refuse to be doing the same four missions over and over and over again. It's just not interesting. So I need more stuff to do. And, uh, well... I just hope that they add more, especially since they were asking for it. Alright, I am going to move a little bit further up ahead into the mission, and I will see you back when I hit the shallows. Alright, we're quite a bit deeper into the canals at this point. Um, we are approaching the shallows, and with that, um, I might need to reduce speed a little bit, although sticking at the water about two, maybe three blocks. And this is where those key lights are really going to come in handy. Of course, they were also designed with the thought in mind of, hey, uh, you might be operating here in the dark. If you are, then you'll not be able to see where exactly these shallow parts are. So originally I also had a couple of lights uh, on the bow, or at least the keel on the bow side. But I uh, apparently got away with those, or did away with those at some point, unintentionally, I might add. Fuel economy for this ship, I have worked out to be about 8 liters per kilometer. Uh, in cruise mode, that is. And that, I think, is really, really quite economic for doing 60 kph. Of course, if you're not feeling uh, as patient, then fuel usage will jump up about, I think, threefold. Still, in cruise mode, that means that this ship can do about, well, 100 to 120 kilometers, depending on how um, careful you're maneuvering with it, how straight your course is, and, of course, how fast you want to be. Seems that for now the ship is doing really, really well. But over here, closer to the craft, is where stuff is really going to get tight. Let's see. This is also uh, an area where I think the uh, keel distance sensor would come in handy. And you got a, a distance meter or distance sensor that tells you how much distance you have between one point and the other point. So let's say the keel and um, how much water there is below the keel, or how close the terrain is to the keel. And that, of course, gives you information about whether or not you should be proceeding here. Combine that with the maps, of course, that we have. Now, again, unfortunately, it's a mission that I've already done. Uh, I just hope that I'm going to get paid decently for it, because I'm down to 7,500. And I need a couple more research points, because there is still plenty of stuff to research. And I, for one, cannot wait to use the hydro jets over here in this area. Unfortunately, the hydro jets are going to take a long time to research, because I first need fluid management. Oh, actually, never mind, there they are, the water jets. Um, but the water jets are part of fluid management, so I first need to spend eight research points. Uh, just checking if I'm going correctly. 8 research points and then another 20. So that's 28 research points. And considering that you're getting about, well, depending on how generous the game is, 6 to 9 research points per mission, that is still going to take quite a while. Of course I could cheat and just edit the save game file and give me more research points, but that's not really what I want to be doing. That was close. I can already notice that the draft of this ship is significantly less than the draft of the previous ship. And I'm slowing down. Uh-oh. No! Still not enough. 
Come on, coast over it, coast over it. I think normally it'd be pretty heavily damaging your props at this point. That's my RPS. Ooh, almost dead. Alright. Uh, slow it down. Shut it down. I do have electric motors in here, so I can do fine maneuvering with electrics. But that is going to come at the expense of my uh, batteries. So once again, we are at the ship that needs rescuing of sorts. I need you to come with me. Yes, walking is hard, isn't it? Alright, can I just put you over there? Uh, you over here. And there is a third one, I guess. Where's the third one again? Were you inside? No. There was this way that you could get out the side. Here it is. Ah, there's the third one. Come on. <laughs> Hold on, could I push this thing back into the water? I know Stormworks physics is a little weird. And I suppose that this is a pretty heavy craft. But unless they fused it to the terrain in the mission editor or made it a static object, you might actually be able to push it into the water. No, I think it doesn't work. All right, lady. Uh, I need you to follow me, and I need you to follow me. I'm going to escort you to the ship first, and then I'll get the others. Or the other one. Well, look at that. They can actually climb aboard themselves. Well, some of them are smart enough to do that. Now the third. Let's just approach from this side. It's probably easier. Oh, they're not even inside. They're just outside here on the side of the ship. Alright, you're going to follow me. This is one big-ass winch that they got here. Now, I'm not sure who it was, but apparently uh, somebody cleaned up the previous wreck that we had over here. Um, which works for me, but it's still, of course, a little unusual. Now, I could go the scenic route. So just go out all the way there, pass along the edge, and go over there. Since I already uh, said the craft in here previously and then walked, this time around I'm just going to take the craft, uh, so the ship, and move it out that way. Alright, regenerating battery power. Not that much. So I would need to be going that way. Uh, maybe not through this very... Very shallow channel. Let's see, is this any better? I'm still wondering what the hell that thing was doing here. Because if I'm running aground with this low, with this shallow draft, then how the hell were they hoping to even get out of here alive? I think that this is a slightly safer way to go. Oh, still pretty damn shallow here. Alright, I would need to go... Yeah, here, and then out the side. So, once again, we are operating as a simple taxi. Which I think is pretty boring for Stormworks. There are so many more interesting things you can be doing in this game. But... This just seems to be one of those that keeps popping up. So, I'm going to leave it to you guys in the comments down below. What sort of missions do you think would be interesting in Stormworks that we don't have already? And keep in mind that so far we're just tasked with uh, collecting passengers or collecting survivors like this. Uh, bring box uh, X to position A. Um, put out this fire. It's all these basic things. I know that there is, or has been for quite a while, talk of adding guns. Um, I'm still not sure if I'm in favor of that. I mean, sure, it would open up a whole host of new opportunities, including sort of anti-piracy or anti-smuggling uh, uh, anti operations. But then again, we're the Coast Guard, we're not the Navy. And yes, I know that people have already made missiles and uh, rockets and... Maybe something like a harpoon gun, uh, considering you got these solid rocket boosters and 
all sorts of attachments. They might damage other ships in that way, but is it really part of Stormworks, or should it be? I don't know. So let me know down below in the comments about that as well. Do you want to see guns in Stormworks? Do you think that would work? Uh, do you think that would be interesting? Let me know. Alright, it is dark, but we have made it back to the fishing village. Now, um, I was able to do quite a bit of speed as I was doing this distance and that distance, and that definitely helped with the mission progress, but also cost me quite a bit of my fuel, so I'm down to 600 liters. Considering I started out at about five, no, 11.25, and I'm now at 6.50, let's say roughly I used about 500 liters of fuel, so that's 500 points, or 500 uh, funds, I guess you could call it. Um, I hope that the mission is going to give me about 10. Something in that range would be really helpful, because it could also allow me to build better ships and bigger ships, which, of course, I would also need more research points for. Anyway, it seems that we have arrived. Uh, we're going to have to do a short distance on foot. Or rather, swimming. And then we are back at their place. Now, once again, a helicopter would have been faster, but I just don't have access to that stuff yet. Unfortunately. A helicopter would have been so much handier. You just fly over, park it, pick, uh, pick the people up, fly back, done. That's all you would need to do. Alright, let's throttle down, slow down, I'm going to keep the lights on, which would help with finding the ship back. And I'm going to pick you up, we're going to jump overboard. I said we're going to jump overboard. No? Okay. Fine, follow me. Are you seriously underneath the craft? Unless you're seriously considering suicide, I would recommend that you steer away from those props. It's not uncommon to actually accidentally kill your uh, <laughs> your fisher people or whatever other person you're trying to rescue by virtue of accidentally <laughs> accidentally uh, putting them into the props. Whether it be the props on your ship or the props of the helicopters. In which case we usually call them rotors. And I believe that I might also have done it at some point with a standard plane. So, gotta be careful not to accidentally murder these people. Or they'll need a whole different sort of rescue. Uh, where do I need to be? This house? Is it? Oh, there we go. Uh, that got me 9,730 and a whole 6 research points. That is not really what I was hoping for. Uh, what can I get for six research points? Helicopters is 15, bigger ships, and as such also uh, our access to the large diesel or the large engine is very far away at 28 points. I think helicopters would be better because um, that's 35 points to get the medium engine. Jeez, it's expensive. Weather sensors are not interesting. Diving gear could come in handy, but it's 10 research points. Bigger wheels. Look at that, 9x9. Nine nine. And eventually also tracks. Uh, power systems is 10 research points. Doors. Yeah, not really. I don't have the funds to build anything that would require a door anyway. Uh, basic mechanics, too expensive. Push buttons or key buttons, lockable buttons. It's all really not a priority. And monitors, uh, nah, or displays rather. And then displays is also a fairly expensive research path because you got two research points for the standard displays, which give you the buzzer, the gauge display, the paintable indicators. Uh, then you got another six to get the advanced displays, which just gives you an RGB indicator light uh, and an instrument panel. And then another 30 to get the actual monitors and the camera gimbals and the HUDs. So that is definitely a long way off. Um, and I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure if I'm going to get that far in this campaign. Because there just does not really seem to be enough to do at the moment. And I would really want there to be more. Um, I mean, I don't mind getting six research points for something like this, but it's going to make the series either very long, 
or very slow. I don't really like the whole, uh, oh, this is going to take forever part. Anyway, I'm going to take the uh, Swamp Racer back to base and give you a quick tour about how I designed this thing, uh, what's under the hood, how it's able to move this fast, and, uh, well, basically, what's inside. All right, back in the editor. Let's take a look under the hood. This thing has two engines. They are set up in the back. And in the back here, the engines are set up in a, well, for me, slightly unusual way. Normally, when I set up an engine, uh, let me pull one up. I set it up like that. So you got the ports on top and you got the little uh, ports where you can actually transfer the power in the back. These ones are set up in this way. So what you're seeing here, this one and that one, these are actually the engines, the top size of the engines. So that's the flat side that you're looking at right now. That uh, does need me to have the pipes for the main propulsion coming in from the bottom of the boat and then being piped back up to the underside of the boat to the inside. Uh, let me see if I can go just go to section plane. Um, yeah, this makes it slightly easier. This over here is where I just removed the pipes and those are gonna come up into this gearbox. The gearbox then, uh, let me move this slightly. Here we go. This is the gearbox, the, uh, the cross section of the gearbox. That pipes it back, pipes it towards an, uh, a generator and then up and around towards the clutch. The clutch then pipes it towards the propeller. And there is, and uh, you can not quite see it yet, an electric motor. Uh, here. This is the electric motor. I have the electric motors set to uh, W and S. Let me see. Uh, this, this one. These directly control the electric motors. So in narrow quarters or when doing very slow speeds or when I want to reverse, I can use these. The clutches are both set up to the throttle up here. The right throttle, this is the clutch. I'll just add this. The clutch and this is the uh, engine throttle. I always start the engines first, wait for those things to spool up and then I transfer the power from the engines directly to the props. Now we also have a couple of buttons here, um, cast off the fuel lines, this one disconnects or sends a disconnect signal or a connector release signal to the fluid connectors. And the fluid connectors are over here in the bow of the boat. They connect to the four fuel tanks up here and then all the way back here towards the engines and to uh, another couple of fuel tanks which are over here. So with that I have six fuel tanks, I have uh, 1125 liters of fuel on board. And that, more often than not, is more than enough to complete any mission. As I mentioned, during the mission, you can actually get about 120 uh, kilometers of autonomy out of this, if you're being careful. Now, then we have the cruise mode, and this toggles the gearboxes that I have over here. I have a 9 to 5 ratio, which is standard, and at this speed, I'm doing those really high speeds of 120 to 130. For the cruise mode, it switches down to 5 to 2. Uh, you could reverse this or move this even slower to 3 to 1. Makes the craft slower, uh, but probably also more economical. Um, exhaust being piped out the back here, as you've seen on the mission, and the port over here in the middle is the one where I take on air. A couple of ladders on the side. Uh, I have a spotlight. The spotlight is set up with the controls of up and down, so I can move it up and down without having to take my keys off the controls too much. Buttons 1 and 2 directly control the engine throttle. Buttons 3 and 4 directly control the clutch. So with three, uh, 1, 2, 3 and 4 I can control how fast my ship is going. The ship speed is measured over here by a linear speed sensor, which is then transferred into a uh, microcontroller. The microcontroller is nothing fancy. It's a microcontroller that has one input, which is the input from the speed sensor, does that by a factor of 3.6, which then gives you the output in kilometers. And that goes from over here to the display that I have here. 
I find my speed to be most important. The other ones are of secondary importance. So these two are the RPS for the engines, left and right. And then I have the battery status. I have a couple of batteries on board. Um, I have the one here in the bow, this one. And then I have two ones on the port and the starboard side. They are not directly... Hold on. This thing is not supposed to tell the fuel tank how much it has. Uh, they're not directly controlled or directly inputted to a dial, but since they're all shared, the power, it doesn't really matter. As long as the reading is between, let's say, 0 0.5 and 1, I know that I have enough power. Uh, the flashers up here, a couple of bl uh, lights, so the standard lights, because I don't have actually the improved ones yet. And these are set up to a microcontroller, uh, Logic. I got a Logic controller that does the red lights and the blue lights, and that is this one down here. Again, it is nothing really too special. I have one output for the blue lights and one output for the red lights. They go or they stay on for half a second and then they go off for half a second and that just repeats. Over here I have the same thing, but I added a capacitor to have a half second delay. So it first flashes the blue and then the red and then it just keeps doing that. But by adding this capacitor, you make sure that the first loop of sorts um, is slightly delayed. And that way you don't activate your, bl uh, your blue and your red lights at the same time. Aside from that, I don't really have too much fancy microprocessor power going on. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward boat. I will put it up on the workshop so you can find the link down below in the description and uh, use it or adjust it as you see fit. I have built it almost exclusively from beginner parts. The one thing that I have on here is this the linear speed sensor. And this is one that you don't have at the start of the game. It's going to cost you, I think, one research point. So if you invest one research point there, then you can use this ship as is. Anyway, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope you can give me some ideas for what to do next week, because I really don't know at this point. Um, sure, there are two more missions that I haven't seen yet. But considering I don't have access to firefighting gear, I don't know if the game is even going to show me those missions. So that means that I would just be ferrying passengers from stock fishing boats until eternity, which is not something that I'm really looking for to do. So let me know down below in the comment section what you think of the ship, um, what you would improve about it. If you want to improve, you can download it and adjust it as you see fit. And otherwise, I shall probably see you guys next week for another Stormworks.